All right, so this is going to be the sixth video in the elementary programming series for the Java programming class, object-oriented programming from sensors to actuators, EECS 1021. All right, so this is the last uh, discussion in this series. We're going to talk about software development from a high-level perspective. Now, up to now, in one of the previous videos, we've talked about the, the, the basic uh, process that you, you undertake when you're writing a piece of software solution. You create a new class or a new function or a new method. You write some lines of code in your editor, and then you save it and you try and compile it. And maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. If it doesn't work, then you go back to this common point and then you fix the, the thing that isn't working and you go back and you recompile and you keep going. And then you take a look to see if it's going to, well, crash or continue working uh, as it should. If it crashes, then then you go back and you try and fix it and you recompile and you run it and you see if it crashes again. And if it doesn't crash, then it terminates. It will eventually end. And if it ends, then you have to ask yourself, or somebody will ask you, did it produce the expected output? Did it print out the thing it was supposed to? Did it turn on the motor that it was supposed to, etc.? Was it correct? And and that process is one that you're going to undertake over and over again. You did last semester in the uh, procedural programming class with MATLAB. You're going to do it again this semester and in future courses where you're doing programming either as the, the main component of the course or programming as a tool in order to get your work done. This is the process that you're always going to be engaging. Now, you can look at it from a higher level perspective. So when as, as you develop projects, you start working in teams and you try and work on, on solutions together. And often that is a multi-day, multi-week, multi-month process that starts with requirements and specifications, an analysis of the system that you're working on, the design of your system, the implementation of it, the testing of it, the deployment and the, de the maintenance and decommissioning that occurs at the very end. Now, uh, in each of these cases or in each of these steps, it typically follows a sort of linear trajectory and there are feedback pathways at each of these steps where you might have to jump back a few steps depending on the outcomes of testing or the outcomes of deployment, etc. Um, this is a modification of or a variant of the traditional waterfall engineering design approach to software development, but also to um, basically all other engineering fields. Um, and in software, this is a traditional way of approaching it, but there are other ones as well, like Agile, for instance. But th this is the one that most people can intuitively see as the process they would follow. So let's talk about a little bit more. All right, so at the first stage, you've got the uh, discussion with the client or the customer to see what the requirements and their specifications are. Now, some people will consider these the same thing. Other people will consider different things. If they consider it different things, sometimes they'll say that the requirements are the informal and sometimes more vague uh, descriptions of what the customer wants, whereas the specifications are more formal and purposefully specific. Um, more numbers and, and units associated with uh, the things that the, the customer wants. Maybe how much wattage it's going to use, or how long the thing will work for, or how fast it will go. And, and actually saying in meters per second or in uh, watts, etc. Okay. From there, you've got the system analysis. And this is the process of understanding the relationships between the inputs to your software and the outputs of your software. There are things that go in, there are things that go out. How do they come together and how are they related uh, in, in that process that you create in your software. That's that's an important thing to analyze. Okay, so you have to know who your customer is, who their customers are going to be, uh, who's going to interact with your software, what's going to interact with your software. Then you've got system design. And here you want to break up the task into functional units. And, and this is one of the places where object-oriented design really shines because these functional units and the testing that can go along with these functional units, say using something like JUnit, um, can be very, very powerful and is a very uh, standard thing that's used in, in industry. Then you've got implementation. And here we're talking about the translation of the system design into programs. So you have these functional units, then you've got these programs, and if you're uh, proceeding nicely, 
then those functional units become sort of blocks inside of your programs, objects, for instance, within your, within your program. Then you have testing, and this is always a really difficult one. And in fact, testing can take up as much time as all the other parts, sometimes even longer. Testing ensures that the software meets the requirements that were specified earlier. Okay, Spe the, the requirements or the specifications, depending on how you want to specify or talk about it. Then you have deployment, and this is when you make the software available for use by your customers. And then you've got maintenance, which is the ongoing process of fixing um, bugs that have been reported or implementing new functionalities for your software. And then there's the other step that we rarely talk about, but one that is hugely important, and that is decommissioning. And that is the removal or phasing out of your software. Your software is not going to last forever. It will, for multiple reasons, at some point, no longer be used. And there are different reasons for that. And there are different reason, or ways of dealing with your software depending on what the justification for the decommissioning is going to be. So decommissioning is the last step. All right, now going back a little bit and to sort of visualize things, testing. You are going to do a lot of testing in your software, whether you're doing it as a software engineering student or a mechanical engineer um, or, or a civil engineering student. When you use software and you include software in your process, you have to make sure that it is verified and that it is valid. And those two things are different. In the verification process, the verification process coming before the validation process, you're testing requirements. And you may have to repeat this process a few times. Um, once you're done, you ask yourself, has the requirement, the requirement been met? If it has been verified, if it has been met, great. If not, then you have to ask yourself the question, why? Why has it not been verified? And does the require mat requirement matter? If the requirement matters, then we likely have to do an update of the design and go back, do some redesign and some retesting. If it turns out that the failed requirement doesn't matter or the requirement has been verified, then we have to ask ourselves, does the design meet the intended use? That is, does the design uh, work the way that your customer had envisioned? If no, then we need to update our design. If yes, then we can say that the design is valid. We have done our validation. Okay. And so this is a, uh, a way of examining your software as you are developing it. This is an engineering approach to software, one in which there is rigor and, uh, and purpose to the process by which you deliver on what was promised in the way that was intended. All right. Good luck, everyone.